All right, let's get into it, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another episode of Zero Dark Nerdy, the world's most notorious pop culture podcast. Brought to you by the Believe Podcast Network, the number one podcast network for professionals out there. This is your boy Brian, a.k.a. El Nino, and today I'm joined with... This is Skylar Brown. Sorry that you couldn't have Jordan here today, but I'll be <laughs> the weirdo for the day. This is Skylar Brown, a.k.a. Andre the Giant 3000, and I'm happy to be here. <laughs> and we have the West Coast... Uh, what was it? What was the AKI had for him? Uh, oh, Bonnie and Clyde. The West Coast Bonnie and Clyde coming to you from San Diego. <laughs> Introduce yourselves out there to the world, please. Hi, I'm Brenda. And I'm Kyle Murphy. <laughs> Thank you two so much for joining us today. We are going to be talking about Wonder Woman 84. It's been a couple weeks now. We've given you plenty of time to watch it. I'm sure the internet has already spoiled lots of it for you. So we're going to be talking about the good, the bad, the ugly. Before we get into it, for those of you listening to us uh, via podcast format, we are going to take just a quick commercial timeout for our sponsor, the, uh, the Believe Podcast Network, as well as betonline.ag, and we will be right back. All right. So... We're, we are going to go ahead and just dive right, right into it. Thank you for those of you that are joining us on Facebook Live. Again, this is going to be on Facebook Live. For those of you that want to see the videos, we will post this on YouTube as well. So we will be answering some, some comments, some responses out there, all that fun stuff. But we're going to go ahead and start off with like initial feedback, reactions, and we'll go ahead and start off with our very own Skylar Brown and just moved back to the great city of Greensboro. I did. I did. Welcome back to me. Happy to be here. <laughs> But the <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> yep. but um, I watched it Christmas Day, I guess, as everybody, you know, when it came out, I uh, watched it with my folks, and we all really enjoyed it. Um, I am highly fully aware that it is not a perfect movie. I would not, <laughs> I would say that it's not a very good movie, but I... <laughs> enjoyed the hell out of it it's got it is of all the movies they've done this is one of them so um i enjoyed the hell out of it it's it's problematic in some places uh, which we 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 can get into um in a little bit uh <laughs> but um i still think gal gal gadot is stunning as uh diana um i think as as um, as much of backlash that we initially, myself included, mm -hmm. sort of gave her to that initial casting, yeah. um, Wonder Woman is still probably the only great DC EU movie they've done. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that she has some moments where you're just like, all right, chill. But I think for the <laughs> most part, she's still incredible in this movie. Um, I love Chris Pine. Um, Oh, uh, just play, uh, Pe Pedro and Kristen, I think both did a really, really wonderful job. Mm -hmm. I don't love Kristen's CGI boss fight at the end. <laughs> um, and sure, it's a trope that's overused. Oh, the that? the nerd that yeah. comes and, you know, that uh, we saw it with um, most recently with Jamie Foxx. Um, that, with a, that nerd uh, trope. Electro. That, yeah, exactly. Yep. Yep. Oh, well, aren't they bringing him back, though? They are. How wild is that going to be? I can't wait for that movie. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll get to that to the end of the show. Yeah, yeah. a whole I got other so conversation now. All that too, <laughs> but, but I think that the movie has a lot of heart and that it's an easy watch and it, it's something that you can put on and not be too stressed about. Um, or pimp pushed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I'll I'll end it there. I'll let you guys because I'll uh, uh, real, yeah, uh, real quick, real quick, Kyle. Before you yeah, start, I, I do want to say to I, I love this man's family. You know, this is Jordan's brother. For those of you watching or listening, mm -hmm. in case you didn't know, this is Skyler of my brother Skyler, one and only. So I went to go see the first Wonder Woman with with your mother. Did you guys see it with parents, my mom? <laughs> and it was such a great experience. I bet it made it that much better. It made it that much better because at the end, I mean, there was there was actual like tears shed, and I remember your mom. I'll never forget this as long as I die. Your mom was like. I've waited so mm -hmm. long for this character to come to screen and it just made it like so much Aww. more surreal for me. So that's that. I just want to get to the good before we get to, I'm sure. <laughs> and the watching, bad it, session. watching it with my mom right. again, yeah. maybe yeah. that's part of it. Kevin Smith, yeah. uh, the director of like, um, 
Dogma oh, and clerks. Uh, all of the clerks and everything mm-hmm. tells this great story of when he saw Wonder Woman for the first time. He's sitting there in his packed theater. The lights go down, and you hear a lady in the back of the room just scream at the top of her lungs, I've waited my whole life for this! <laughs> and, you know, that movie was going to be incredible regardless, mm-hmm. you know, as soon as she yelled that out. So mm-hmm. I, that's sort of like... I, I think it's I think it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, there are some plot points that we can talk about. There's that quite are a dumb. few. <laughs> There's quite a few. There's quite a few. But go ahead. Uh, I mean, I, it was I love the first one. I, I I thought the only thing wrong with the first Wonder Woman was the third act, which everyone Agreed. complains about the Agreed. CGI mess and Agreed. kind of just weird at the end, like a super strong beginning and, and middle. And then I just kind of tapered off. And the same thing with this one, we were watching it together and the very opening got us. I we were like super, I'm like, I'm in. I'm like, this is like, going to be great. great. Yeah, yeah, we were super involved. And then it just like trickled away, yeah. like bit by bit. And then it's like, okay, there's a wishing stone. Okay, like fine, no, no problem. I can get behind a lot of dumb stuff. Like I'm in, like I watched Suicide Squad <laughs> the other day again, just to make sure it was bad. Like I had to, like, I watched it alone. And I was like, yeah, this was, this was bad. Like this was mm-hmm. legitimately not a good movie. Yeah. But like, I, 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 we wanted to like this movie the whole way through. Yeah. And, and we got like halfway through, we looked at each other like, is this good? No. This just, just like you're doing now. <laughs> no, like, no, like, and I know she's like a bigger critic of this stuff. And I will let a lot of shit slide. Uh-huh. Like the minute, like Kristen Stewart, or not Kristen Stewart, uh, wig. Wig. wig made the wish, and then the next day she's like hot. Like, yeah. I get that, like her, her ability is to like, like that she mimics her powers, great. But Wonder Woman's not just like attractive to be attractive. You are like, wow, she's amazing. I'm gonna say all these crazy things to her. Like that's not part of her power set. Yeah. She just is right. hot yeah. in a place where the women are hot and right. She, I didn't get that, and then the fact that everyone's like, hey, what's up? Like I notice you now, and it's like. All right, you took your glasses off. I get it. Yeah, you don't look homely. Cool. Anymore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not talking the same amount either. It wasn't what like she got more interesting. Not she another teen was, movie. Was was like, oh, gross! She's got glasses and a ponytail. <laughs> yeah. Look at that Ew. sweater. She's wearing it again. How could she be <laughs> desirable to anyone? Is that a cardigan? <laughs> didn't, didn't get that. Didn't get a lot of the stuff. I mean, like the movie just seemed like it had so many ideas and things it was going for, and he was. The Pascal was such a dick to his kid the whole time. Oh, yeah. I'm like, oh yeah, this guy's totally gonna redeem himself at the end. By, I, I, I don't know. There's a lot wrong with it in the sense that, like you were saying, like lots of plots. But yeah, like it's fun. Like it's something that if like it's on in the background and I'm not paying attention and it has a good heart or whatever it wanted to anyway. But yeah, I, want it to be really mean. I don't want to be really mean to it because I wanted it to be good. But Shazam was also a really good DC movie that no one gives enough credit for. Never saw it. Agreed. Never saw it. Agreed 100%. Just to watch it. To I told watch her it. how good it is. Doesn't yeah. Matter. I, I waited for I not I don't even know if HBO Go or now or whatever the hell is was yeah, out is. yet. But I, I waited for the very like I was like, all right, fine, I will finally watch Shazam. Oh, and you yeah, do? does You're not get enough show? credit. Literally does not get enough okay, credit. Fine, so good. Go watch it. Go watch it. I got it. So Kip, 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 Kip chimed in, and I think this is on the uh, Not Another Team oh, yeah, movie. Yeah. He says she's got pain on her overalls. <laughs> Ew. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, God. Pain on her overalls. <laughs> yeah. Kip could not get over how she just went from, like, this homely, like, lowly nobody to, just, like, Kesha, basically. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With yeah. her like ridiculous outfits and then just I don't know it just I she I wasn't a good I just, just did not enjoy her as a villain at all I love Kristen I love everything she's done mm-hmm. I just I could not get behind her character and then when she did the transformation into like the full on what was her cheetah the she alpha. alpha yeah alpha. The alpha, I didn't even right. know that character existed like I'm mm-hmm. also not as like in the the you know she's an apex brother. Well, I oh, yeah. oh yeah. You know, like a shark, she could have turned into a goddamn shark. <laughs> like anything else other than a damn cat. Okay? Or, you know, a cheetah. Like we already have Catwoman. Like. <laughs> like I hear another apex predator is like a, a whale. Like, right. Like an octopus, like you know, giant things in the ocean. 
Whatever. An apex an predator. You're a human uh, being. Uh, you're like you're, you're there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, already top the food chain, but forget about it. <laughs> yeah, that too. Yeah, we're already apex predators, but whatever. Oh, no. uh, I'm sorry. The the lightning bolt and the step fact that she like now can fly, but not really, and then the fact that she can make things invisible, but she can out of nowhere. That like. like yeah, all of those scenes yeah. needed to be either not in the movie or because one, More I think we can all it. agree this movie is thirty minutes too long. Oh, absolutely! And yeah. I, yeah, it it desperately, desperately needs to be condensed. But when and she's like, running, as, as soon as he running said, everywhere. the running everywhere. Oh my god, he said a line that was like, "Oh, when you when she's asking him about flying, and he yeah, says, a plane's a plane, fl just flying a plane." <laughs> that was right. Like, this is how she's gonna learn to fly. This is yeah, how she's World gonna learn. War and she's like, 1980, no big deal. It's the same thing. All these buttons, that's just like that prop plane I had back in the day. You know, <laughs> back in the twenties. <laughs> same shit. Right. On, forward, got it, up. <laughs> cool. He landed it, by the way. They don't show him land it. But he right. landed that fucking plane without being able to see the dashboard because now it's mm. invisible, oh, yeah. by the way. <laughs> right. They show right. him looking down. It's like, it's invisible, but I'm going to land this shit. No yeah, problem. I'm, I'm going to land the fuck out of it. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Whatever. A plane's a plane, guys. That's, yeah. That's all that is. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, you know, I agree with everyone. This movie was definitely 30 minutes too long. I, I like the fan service in terms of the the invisible jet, which mm -hmm. is you know that's like her her ride, yeah. And you know yeah, I I did think it was incredibly cornball central where it was like all right, well flying is just air versus this, and she's like, so you've been around, around this long, there. and you just now kind of realize like how to kind of fly and ride <laughs> lightning bolts and do all this shit and. So, yeah, it's cornball service. And I, honestly, I thought the whole Chris Pine thing where he just, like, was in the body of the dude and that's all she could see was him. I'm like, uh, you know, I, I understand not bringing someone back from the dead, but I expected just a little, little bit more from that. I would have preferred if they had just brought it right, back from the dead right. if you're going to do something weird like that. Because right. then you also bring in questions of, like, who the fuck is this guy? Like, right. Hey, yeah. Is she, is this rape? Like, yeah. you know? 100%. Like, <laughs> and when she looks at him again, sensual? when she looks at him yeah. again, right. like, I've seen you naked. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's, <laughs> these are like real questions. No, nah, just have him be a zombie. Don't, I, didn't, like, I didn't even think about right? that, especially Why the whole sex scenes, because this is yeah. like, is he still so, like a, a Tomley correct, like Steve was? Right. Or, Maybe he's like know? married with a family. We don't know. <laughs> Are these exact matches? Is that why he got to occupy his body? Exactly. <laughs> All the dimensions just about the same. <laughs> this Which is, this is the hard movie. copy of fucking oh comic God. book entertainment right here. Right, right. Bring it down to the nitty gritty. Real quick, if they took all right. So, so the rules are this: she wishes for him back. He takes over a body, right? The other guy wishes for there to be a wall, instant wall, instant, why yeah. instant there, wall. Why doesn't he have his body? Why does he have to take over someone's body? That right, even makes sense. Yeah, right. Also, who didn't wish for world peace out of all the millions of people? But like, <laughs> Not one we, we've like, seen uh, enough. We'll we've seen see. enough Miss Universes to know that at least <laughs> six of them wish for world peace. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it doesn't make any sense. I guess everyone's that selfish. <laughs> yeah. So just a couple comments that we're getting in here. Uh, big shout out to Cisco. She totally didn't get that dude's consent for sex. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Jennifer yeah. Winkleman, uh, she says, yes, hated the Chris Pine thing. No idea why he had to be in another body of another guy. So, yeah, I mean, a lot of people are definitely in agreement on that. And Kip, not one kid wished for a dinosaur. <laughs> well, amazing. apparently that kid has watched a lot of Jurassic Park right, movies right. and probably knows the outcome of that. They're very, very aware, man. So here, here's, I'll just gonna, I'm just going to go ahead and give my take on why I think it would be enjoyable if we do cut out 30 minutes. Now, which 30 minutes we cut out? It, and just just like Skyler said, I love Pedro Pascal, and we all we all love Kristen Wiig. Mm -hmm. It's not like they were terrible in their performances. This is another example of how DC 
just does not get it right with their villains. Yeah. And we have seen this over and over and over again where they bring in great actors, just like in the first Wonder Woman. Uh, I can't think of the gentleman's name, but um, oh. who played Ares. Right. But I literally thought in that final act that he was going to fight Wonder Woman in a suit the entire time. <laughs> and I was like, this can't be the final fucking battle. So I was glad to, you know, finally so see worse. him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when he did bring out all the all the God of War shit, it was like, uh, maybe he should have. <laughs> but, uh, you know, they really do, besides the kind of standalone projects, for the exception of Mark Strong and Shazam, uh, again, very, very underrated uh, DC film, which was supposed to kind of be like their Guardians of the Galaxy, and I ended up being that. It just didn't get enough credit because everything else that DC had really done up to that point was not great. So, you know, again, with Pedro Pascal, great actor. I've loved him since he was Ober and Martell in Game of Thrones. Loved him as Javier Pena in Narcos. Uh-huh. Uh, Triple Frontier, he was spent, like, he's, I mean, and of course, The Mandalorian. I mean, I can go on and on. It's not, it's not these actors' fault. Yeah. That it's not like they're giving bad performances. I think it's that they're getting written in really shitty. Yeah. yeah. And that's what DC's MO has been is just the shitty DC villain that they're bringing in. And there's a lot of good DC villains, but they're just not doing them justice. I mean, unless we get into, uh, you know, Joker, but that's that's a whole different right. ball game for a whole different episode that we've done. But yeah, it, Jared it's Leto like... is so good, right? <laughs> bring him back. <laughs> well, apparently they, they are, you know, supposed to bring him back. But again, with, you know, Kristen Wiig, I actually, I enjoyed her performance. But yeah, the, I thought the Cheetah thing was rushed. And that's the thing, for a movie that was so long, I feel like it was also so rushed yep. in so many parts and so many performances. Didn't they go back and do reshoots because the test audiences that they had, like, shown it said it was, like, bad? And then they went back and then did more work on it? That's what I had heard? For for 84? Yeah. Oh, I, oh I, I, didn't, I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. I got to double check that then, but yeah. that's what I had heard. They it did. could be oh, true. On some reshoots because the test screenings were so negative. Wow. Yeah. That's could why they had true. originally pushed back, I guess, the original release of it. Uh, maybe huh. I watched something wrong, but I'll have to double check it. But, yeah. And I mean, the only thing I took out of it, and this is what I'm hoping that, that DC signed up for, especially by bringing back Patty, is that they were going for an original Wonder Woman TV show feel. You know, the, the cheesy villains. Absolutely. Well, cheesy villains between the two of them. Just that kind of campy 80s feeling to where it's like, it's not really a part of the DCEU because it's set in 1984 and everything else is pretty much besides Wonder Woman, you know, set nowadays. Right. Is that, and obviously <laughs> with, I mean, to me, the saving grace of the whole movie is the very end credit scene with the oh, original yeah. Wonder Woman on there. Yeah, that I mean, cool. that to me, because I was like, oh my gosh, this, this is fucking amazing. Like, I remember growing up watching mm-hmm. watching this. So that that's the only thing I can think of is that they were trying to go for more of that campy 80s, cheesy <clears throat> nostalgia, just all the way across the board. Not just, let's be Stranger Things, like, you know, we're right. in the 80s. Right, right, right. Let's just go ahead and, and just go for the home run. Like, we're 80s all the way, and this includes a TV show with the Invisible Jet with everything else, but we just try to make it more modernized because I thought it was a very, very quick decision for DC to go ahead and green light Wonder Woman uh, 3 that fast. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> they must have like an already like roadmap for what they're going to do with her, with showing the end credits with her and everything yeah. like that. But then at the same time, it's, they're, they're basically changed the whole timeline of DCEU with this movie, with showing that there was a time in, in everything <clears throat> in this world where there, everyone got a wish and it could change just like every <laughs> single person's origin. Just at the end, like they showed her not being Cheetah anymore, but that doesn't mean she ever gave up her wish. Right. So she's probably still right. the same person, but now she doesn't get the extra influx that he gave her to make her into that form. Mm-hmm. Right. Still like, you know, just as strong, just as powerful, but now pissed. But right, now, right. right. Which doesn't even make sense why she'd be pissed. Like, she got the best end of the deal. She's yeah, still, yeah. Like, and she's still alive. Like, she doesn't have to give it back. <laughs> right. <laughs> but then, like, it's, if it's set in 1984, then you got to think about every other movie that came before it and is after it in the timeline. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, in the timeline, like, when did when did everything start happening in the DCU? Like, right. Okay, so it was, like, after 1984, but we don't even know where 
this move like the Batman v Superman starts where it mm-hmm. ends. Right. What, what timeline right. it really is on. So And I mean that's the thing like they either I, just like gave themselves a soft reset for everything. Right. Or they just pigeonholed themselves like really bad. Or yeah. just, and, and obviously, we all know that they don't know where they're going with with all this stuff. You know, with with a new Batman coming out, with uh, apparently a Joker Part Two coming out, but they also want to do a Joker standalone movie with Jared Leto coming out. And apparently, Jared Leto is going to be in the Snyder Cut of Justice League coming out this March on HBO Max. Oh, wow! So it, it's it's just so much, and when it's done right. It, it's done right, which is very few and far between, you know, <laughs> a.k.a. Todd Phillips Joker. Yeah. But at, at, at some point, we all have to, you know, kind of sit back and be like, so where in the hell are we in the timeline of all this shit? So is it just... The multiverse thing, and that's what the whole the whole Flashpoint paradox and everything like that that's going to be coming out. Right. right. Michael Keaton's already signed on to do one of the movies. Yep. So all of these places, all these timelines, all these multiverse don't matter. So yeah. they're just like, oh, basically, like, here's this earth that matters with the Justice League. Everyone else doesn't matter. Because, like, right. doing the Joker movie with uh, Joaquin Phoenix, for instance, um, that's by itself. I mean, that's a whole different universe yeah. then. So you're saying that that Joker from that timeline, 20, 20 years later after the events of that, I guess in 1984, because we don't even know what year really. Yeah. I guess it's the 70s or 60s or whenever. That it's definitely 70s days. or 80s New York City because it wasn't okay, done. So like around then, but then I guess Batman would only be like, you know, 30 by the time these movies come out. So like the, right. the timeline's all over the place. Yeah. So then everyone gets a wish. Why wouldn't Bruce Wayne wish for his parents back? You know, like <laughs> right. what's going on? Like that's why it doesn't right. make sense to me unless like future stuff changes. Right. Well, I mean, that's also a good point too because we don't know. Yeah. You know what I mean? So if, if everybody was supposed to bring their wishes back and some people didn't, because to me, there's two things that bother me about that. It's like when, when, when Pedro, uh, you know, he played Maxwell Lord, when he goes back to his kid, I'm glad that he like miraculously found him under a fucking highway in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> in the middle of nowhere <laughs> just screaming bush, for him. Bush. Right. Alive. You know, yeah. and on top yeah. of that, you, you would think like the stone would come back into its own and just yeah. kind of disappear somewhere. Like it normally would, but it was just like, oh, I realize I'm a very shitty dad. I need to run back to my kid that I miraculously find underneath this highway after everything's all fucked up. Right. So, yeah. Either, by the way, just com- there were farm animals everywhere at one point. And there was no one anywhere at all. By the White House, by the way. By the White House. Yeah. Deal. This is in the Lincoln era. Right. Where there wasn't even a fence in front of the White House. No, no. He, just, he, he got dropped off by, by Air Force uh, One, the helicopter. And they're like, oh, you're good here? Cool, bye. And yeah. then I just left him. And then, yeah. okay, I guess we're all we're not World War Three anymore at this point. Right. Everything's fine. Yeah. Everything's yeah. fine. Yeah. Yeah. A, lot, so, a lot of plot holes. A lot, a lot of plot today. holes. But, you know, again, I think if it's two hours long, it's definitely one of those I can put on the background mm-hmm. and do work. Like, I, I don't think it's the worst thing they've done mm-hmm. by any means. I actually, I, believe it or not, I enjoyed I enjoyed it better than Aquaman. I, I really did. I just, there was, there was a lot to be desired in Aquaman. That's just, that's just my opinion. I'll agree with that. That's just my opinion. I, I did enjoy Wonder Woman 84 a little bit more than Aquaman. But I mean, that's you know, that's again my opinion. Now, but <laughs> are there any comments before I move forward? Because there was a lot of oohs and ahs on there, and I'm sure I'm going to get ripped apart on, no, <laughs> on Facebook. A lot of people remember Aquaman. I just remember being under the water. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people hated Aquaman, so you are not in on all right. that. Um, it, I yeah. thought it was. I thought it was at the time DC's second best, which wasn't saying much, but no. No, um, and at, at the time we literally had nowhere to go but up. Though. Yeah, exactly. And and that's the thing. It it just it didn't We're leave so much good. to be desired. Mm-mm. So with that being said, so my if if we want to go ahead and talk about like so far best villains, let's just say in the DCEU, mm-hmm. plain and simple. You know, as far as like Wonder Woman, Batman, like that we know of the people in Justice League, and we can go around the circle on this. I'll go and I'll go and say the best part of Aquaman to me was Black Manta. Oh yeah, I cannot wait to see him oh, in the yeah. sequel. It's the only reason yeah, yeah. I'm even interested in the sequel. I can't remember the actor's name, but he's been on uh, um, Yaya Abdul Mateen, if I'm not mistaken. There you go. He's going to be in the new Candyman yeah. Uh, yeah. remake with oh, really? uh, what is it, Keenan Peel? 
Jordan Peele. Jordan Peele. Jordan, Jordan Peele. Peele. He was in a couple of Black Mirror episodes. Mm-hmm. He's actually been in a lot. He was in the um, the what, what was the he one movie on Netflix? Um, Netflix about the eighties, uh, like break dancing and shit. Like either way, he he's great. I thought he was a great Black Manta. So he to me right now, as far as like DC EU villains. He's my favorite. I, I cannot stand, as much as I love the guy in Zombieland, as much as I love him in Social Network, I really cannot stand <laughs> Jesse. Jesse as Lex Luthor. I will forever and always the hate that choice. worst thing that could have possibly done to that franchise. Oh. Absolutely. <laughs> as, soon as, as soon as I saw that, I'm like, I, I just can't. Like, Heath Ledger, I'm not going to say that I was the first one on the Heath Ledger train. It took me a second, but once I saw the previews, I was all about it. But uh, Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor is the worst thing in the franchise. Yep. Honorable mention, though, and we only see him for like 30 seconds at the end of Justice League is Joe uh, Manga. Yeah, I was going to say that. That's yeah, our, our buddy from True Blood, yeah. Joe, whatever his last name is, that dates like homegirl Manganiello as Deathstroke, which yeah. Yeah. I cannot wait to actually happen? see that. Yeah, I can't wait to see that. That's why he's got an honorable mention because we don't see him do shit, but mm-hmm. to see, to be able to see him hopefully eventually play Deathstroke, that, though, so those are my main two. So there's my, my, my favorite one and my honorable mention. So if you guys kind of want to go down the line and have like yeah. a favorite, least favorite, or honorable I'm mention for villains right. or who you would like to see come up as mm-hmm. a villain in the DCEU, <clears throat> then feel free to chime in. Um, I can go. Since yeah, I'm you right. go. Because so, <laughs> he took Deathstroke from me. I'm like, that, he can't be bad yet because they haven't ruined him yet. Right, exactly. I can't, I can't wait armor, to see him. And I like that character, so that sucks. Okay. That's um, going to be amazing. Um, it's funny you say Yaya because Patrick Wilson as um, Ocean Master in Aquaman is incredible. Um, but as, going way, way back... Um, Michael Sheen as General Zod is unbelievable. Okay. Unbelievable. I don't know where the air horns are at. There we go. We're going to get some air horns for that one. That's a good one there. Completely underrated. And because people hate that movie. And I think it's wonderful. Oh, I think it's great. I think it's wonderful. I thought Man of Steel was fantastic. Man of Steel. Man of Steel. That was too long, too. Yeah, it was that too was, long. That was like what you said before. Like <laughs> they could have cut a like fifteen minutes out. Absolutely, of Michael Shannon is a fucking lots of Michael Shannon. Shannon. I said Michael yeah. Sheen. You're yeah. right. Yeah, fantastic yeah. actor. All yeah, three yeah. of them: Michael Sh- uh, Shannon, uh, the guy who plays Pa Kent, uh, Kevin Costner, yeah, and Kurt Russell as uh, Dad, whatever. Yeah. Were all yeah. stellar in that movie. Yep, and um, I adore that movie. But as far as like my favorite, I mean Heath as Ledger, Heath as Ledger, Heath as Joker <laughs> is perfect in every possible way. But if we're talking strictly DCEU, yep. um, I might, I might have to go with General Zod. Then um, trying to think back of what all that that's a good one because I didn't love what's his face as Ares, and that's their best movie. Yeah, so Zod. <laughs> that was my choice. So, you know, it's not. Right, exactly. I'll think of one. He is like, great. Oh, very, minutes, very good so. call on that. Michael Shannon is an incredibly underrated actor, and we're, yes. we're going to have an underrated actors episode on, coming up soon. Bring it on. So, he is about fantastic. poorly used actors, like, like you said before, like people that are just like totally miscast. They're awesome, yeah. but just like terrible. Uh, I was going to say, before you took it, Deathstroke, but... Uh, um, God damn it. Uh, Will Smith's character in Suicide Squad. Yep. Technically All right. Uh, that's Deathstroke, right? A dead, uh, dead shot. Dead shot. Dead shot. Dead yeah. shot. And then Mark Strong. Uh, probably Mark Strong. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. thought he was like, perfect. He does Mark Strong well. He does himself, and he, he, <laughs> he carries that whole thing. Wait, Mark Strong and Shazam, right? Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Yeah, as far as villains go, yeah. Like, those two, since Suicide yeah. Squad, technically anti-hero, whatever. Yeah, right. And, and it's funny. It's funny that you say Mark Strong too, because Mark Strong was as much as like a shitty movie that it was in Green Lantern. Mark Strong was the shit in that too. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's what that's Sinestro. That's Sinestro. Right. That's Sinestro. That's... Yeah, yeah. So that movie yeah. yeah, he's he's great. He's fantastic. Man, fantastic. Popular opinion. I liked Harley Quinn. <laughs> in what? 
anything. Birds of prey. Well, I guess <laughs> she's she's great because she, her, and Will Smith she's, were the only two bright yeah. spots of yeah. uh, Margo, Suicide Squad. Margot Robbie is hard. Margo, thank you. Plain and simple. I can't, oh, yeah. and that's the thing. That's why I, uh, like, she's it. not the reason I don't like the movies. Mm-hmm. It's just again, it's the writing, it's everything else. Like she is Harley Quinn, absolutely. Yeah. Choreography, plain and simple. The fight choreography, <laughs> that Birds of Prey is so bad. Yeah, the big girl fight scene. Oh, oh no! <laughs> I think like, he was watching it, and I think he was like 15, 20 minutes in. I came in, and I was like, "Ooh, what are you watching?" And he told me, and I just got stuck. Yeah, <laughs> I it very much. And I looked at him at the. He's like, "That was awful." I was like, what? I really like that movie. Be glad you were not in the movie theater. That was that was one of the last movies I saw before COVID, and I was like, oh shit. Yeah, it was a bad take. But see, um, what's it called? Um, Bloodshot was like the last movie I saw before they kind of started doing that. With the Vin Diesel movie, yeah. where yeah. you want to talk about garbage? One of my, <laughs> one of my favorite comic book Tom's series. Oh no! Great, yeah, great comic book yeah, series. And the that's bottom rack over there, and it's yeah. all Valiant. It's all just. I was going to say that's Valiant, right? Oh, yeah. yeah, they're 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 a big presence at Durham Comic Con here in, in Green, uh, not Greensboro, in Durham every year. And usually, as soon as you walk in, all you see is is Bloodshot stuff. Mm. I so. love that the all of that universe is great. I, if they got the money to like do it, they would they could easily control yeah. the Marvel. I've actually yeah. enjoyed because they, they actually did a lot of the uh, Stranger Things comic books too, as far as like what Will was going through in the upside down and stuff like that too. So for all our fans out there listening, be sure to check out Valiant because they have some awesome shit out there. Do not judge them on a Vin Di- on a Vin Diesel yeah, movie. Seriously. Please. Jesus <laughs> so sad. As soon as I heard that they were like make a movie, I'm like, yes, and they're like Vin Diesel's going to headline him. Like, no. No. <laughs> no. Just anybody. Right. Make it a random dude. Pay him like $100,000. And then like make a great movie. Exactly. No. All right. We're going to get off topic for just one yeah. second. Just because, you know, pop culture news. I want to air this next week. So the big news is, you know, Sony, especially because of PlayStation, they want to take advantage of their, their gaming rights and obviously turn them into movies. So the big headline this past week was Gerard Butler coming oh, in to right. play Kratos in the God of War movie. Really? Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what what are your three thoughts on that right well, there? Kyle does not look happy. Say it, <laughs> it should it should I not be him. Boy, oh no, I can see it, but I can uh, see I it. See you can see it because of three hundred. That's the yeah, problem. but that was also twenty years ago. Yeah, but he's not like cut anymore. Uh-uh. That's gonna, gonna be the biggest. His entire lower is body. Or... With CGI. Is, I is mean, it gonna fair. be like the new game, or is this gonna be like a whole like we're gonna make three movies getting towards the newest game kind of deal? Like, where are they gonna go with it? Are they? Well, apparently, it? apparently, yeah, it's just gonna be based off the game, starting with the first one, obviously Holy going shit. up to the newest one. Wow. So yeah. super gory, very mythological based, very yeah. uh well it fits his repertoire of movies he's been doing lately with all the disaster films. <laughs> that whole movie like, I did love Den of Thieves. Thieves. I don't know if you've seen Den of Thieves yet, mm-hmm. but he's yeah. awesome in Den yeah, of he Thieves. He was great. He's great. I don't think he's jacked and can be playing Kratos. But I mean you gotta remember too in three hundred, a lot of those guys oh, that shit's no, CGI. No, they weren't all bug. that rich. <laughs> I they agree. All that I think that's why I asked him. Like, is he all CG now? Or is it like, oh, like posting his head and then he's like another guy's stunt body? Like, I mean, if the, who's doing the script? Do we have any idea? No, no, no idea that, yet. So that, that's that. literally the only announcement that's been made is that he's agreed so far, like in writing per se, to the play guy. the role of Kratos. The guy who does his, uh, Kratos' voice is a black guy too, though, right? Yeah. And he's bald in the thing. I mean, is I don't he know. Do his voice too? Are they going to shave his head? Is he going full shaved head? I don't oh, know. This is this is all I'm brand new out. news. Yeah. yeah. And then what what company's producing it? Anything? It's Sony. Sony. Yeah. So Sony, they Sony. want to take advantage of the, all the properties that they own. So and they don't own that many. I don't love and it. They did so well with the Spider Man franchise. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll we'll get to that here in a little bit too because I feel like Spider Verse. Might be a nightmare, but before before we get to that, though, all right, so we do have some DC titles coming out this year and next year. Some of them are going straight to HBO Max. Mm-hmm. We covered a few of them on a, a few podcasts ago, but I want to go back through them with you three here. So the first one up to bat, of course, is the Snyder Cut of Justice League coming out March 2021. 
apparently we get a, a whole lot more dark side in it and then we just kind of go from there so we'll just kind of go if you're into it you get the ding if you're not into it you you'll get the buzzer not like you'll get the buzzer but just let me know if it's a thumbs up or thumbs down if you're interested in it and we'll just kind of go down the line snyder cut Oh. <laughs> oh, that gets the buzz. Oh. Up this one. Oh. You didn't see it. You don't know. It's like I don't know anything about this. Four one. hours I can nerd out on. I'm right. <laughs> right. So dig okay. for that. And Brenda, I'll give you a dig for you because you're married to Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> so you're gonna have to you're gonna have to watch it regardless. I mean obviously. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Then after that we have the Suicide Squad with James Gunn. Now the main changes from what I've read are this is gonna set uh, take place in the 70s so it's going to be more of a now it's not going to take place in vietnam but it's going to give more of a vietnam kind of feel i believe it's supposed to take place around the bay of pigs hmm. something like that and uh idris alba is coming in to play bloodshot i believe he's because it's, it's not, not dead it's, shot. it's not it's not dead shot no, he's, blood, he's like blood something. He's, he's something different but similar. He's right. he, he's Correct. Gonna die in the first ten minutes. <laughs> you think so? I do. I do. I think. I think he's gonna kill half that cast in the first fifteen to twenty minutes of that movie. I agree with that. Easily. I agree with that. But I. I was. I think Idris is gonna be one of the ones that. Lasts. He's playing blood sport. Blood, blood sport. That's, it. Blood That's sport. who he's playing. The John Claude Van Damme yeah. movie. He's <laughs> the guy is dead. The guy is gonna be there for like five minutes. He's gonna do one or two cool things. And then I think he's dead. Holy I, cow. I, 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 wow. That is a yeah. bold prediction, my friend. Yeah. Just like, uh, what's his name? Uh, I, can see it. I know you're not talking about the Tomahawk guy in the original Suicide Squad, because yeah. nobody gave a he shit was, when that dude died. Uh, he was like, oh, I'm going to oh, jump yeah, this building over here. Boom. Slipknot. 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 Yeah, the nobody gave two anything. fucks when he went. I, I don't think you bring in a big name like Idris and then like get rid of him in the first they half, the like, half hour. They did. They did it with the Rock and Reno Nine One One. I mean, two different universes, but we'll see. <laughs> I don't know. I. I, I mean, I That's think. That's my prediction. Oh, God. No. God. I, could, <laughs> I could see it. I could see them doing something wild like that. I mean, it's James Gunn, so you never know. But I mean, the guy has been on fire. So I'm just I'm super okay. excited to see John Cena in that movie. <laughs> also gonna die as a oh absolutely not he is one thousand percent surviving the movie. <laughs> oh, you think he's gonna survive? I think he is because I think that they want to do. I think it's gonna be the most. I think I think James Gunn is gonna try and screw with everybody and get like as many of the big name people dead. Really? <laughs> you never guess what's gonna happen. I'm James Gunn. I did the Guardians. We'll do and another gonna, episode. Dead, after dead, that. dead, dead, dead. Let's do it. Let's do it. Well, I like it. I like it. Multiple, place. multiple air horns for that one. <laughs> Bull prediction from Kyle out there. I love it. Love it. All right. So next up after that. So that's pretty much gonna wrap up this year, this year. unless. You know, God knows what the fuck is going to happen this year if well, we even it. get there. <laughs> um, yeah, the, we're we're airing this, by the way, as the Capitals being run over. Mm, yeah. So <laughs> we'll see what happens. All right, so they have now pushed back the Batman with uh, Robert Pattinson, which I just saw recently in Tenet. I do want to go ahead and say that mm. Tenet gets that from me. It was probably one of Christopher Nolan. I, I love his movies. I think, like, at this point now, if you don't have a PhD, you don't belong watching a Christopher <laughs> Nolan movie because it just goes. It. You're also frozen. Oh, oh no. I know. You're frozen, too. Oh, Damn it. Yeah. How do we do that? Uh-oh. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. We can still hear you, though. Yeah, yeah likewise. All right. Uh, as long as we can hear each other. Hopefully, it'll figure itself out. Uh -oh. But Robert Pattinson was great in that. I, I, was, I was a hater at first of the casting choice until I saw the first trailer. Oh, it's us. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. and uh, yeah, it looks like we are frozen. I don't, I don't know how to fix that. Now we're good. Hopefully it'll fix itself. Oh, we're good. All right, there okay. we go. So it'll fix itself here soon. So what's what's everyone else's take on the Batman and where we go from there? And that, again, release date tentative is April 4th of next year now. So we have now been, put, we've now pushed it back two years. Well, just like you, I didn't, I'm not a huge Robert Pattinson fan, just Twilight just can die. But as soon as I saw that first trailer, I was like, all right, I'm down. It's I, very dark. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm with it. 
Nicholas Wade Dark, then whatever has been happening with because of COVID, he's not been doing anything since then. He's given up his workout routine. Oh, no. He just eats. I think he got COVID at one point. I don't know. Uh-huh. But I mean, that the trailer was only 20% of the footage that they like, even had done right. yet. So mm-hmm. they still have to do a whole movie, do post production, add in all this stuff. Yeah, like I'd be surprised. Like they're saying 2022, right? Yeah. yeah. Next year, did they, did they say like when, like summer? Yeah, April, April fourth of twenty twenty two. That's the next. That'd date. be cool if that ever happened, but that's yeah. only a year from and like two, three months from now. Yeah, I don't know. I, I hope it. I think it's gonna be great. I think, I think having uh, what's his name is Alfred changing that. He's a great actor. I can't remember his name. Wait, who's Alfred? He's the guy from. Um, no, no, but who's the the guy playing him? Not Alfred. I'm sorry, Commissioner Gordon. Oh My yeah. My bad. Uh, um, the guy who's... from. Uh, Oh, it's, um, um, can't think of his name. Oh, he, he was so, oh, oh I can't believe this, this is like what I do. Andy Circus? No. Circus? No. no. Oh, well, that's Alfred. Yeah. Yeah, the other Commissioner guy. Commissioner Gordon. Commissioner Gordon. He's a Hispanic guy. Oh, oh, yeah, Jeffrey, Jeffrey Wright. Wright. Jeffrey Wright. Yeah, Jeffrey from Wright. Uh, Westworld. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's oh, great. Yeah, yeah. He's going to be voicing the, um, the What If series on Disney+. Plus. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, the car, he's going to be the uh, the watcher. Oh, Kip Cullen. Oh. Yes, sorry, Kip. Who? Yeah. <laughs> Question mark? What's that? Who, who's he going to be? He's going to be, so on the animated series for the What If on yeah. Disney+, Plus, he's going to be the watcher, which is... Oh, yeah, yeah. The yeah. cosmic watcher. Yep. Giant yeah. head baby guy. Yep. And I mean, he's got he's got a he's a great great voice for that. So no, I am excited about that. I forgot about that. And then uh, you know, on top of that too, I was not that excited until I saw the trailer. And I think it was uh, who was it that's playing the Riddler? Mark Dano, Paul, Paul Dano, Dano. Paul Dano. Mm-hmm. Paul if Dano. that if that is his voice, I can going throughout the trailer to me is <laughs> literally what makes it. Yeah, I I think if we don't have that and we just kind of like if I just saw some footage, I would have mm-hmm. been like, ah. Eh, but Paul, if that is Paul Dano and that is him playing the Riddler, which I know he's playing the Riddler, but if that is his voice, super fucking stoked. Yeah. And then seeing the old school kind of like Blade, Challenger, <laughs> yeah. uh, Batmobile. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Love the shit out of that. Practical. And they're doing, <laughs> right. a little, uh, they're doing like basically like the new Batman run, uh, Tom King kind of version mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. what they're doing. It seems like that kind of world. Where yeah. they're just kind of tweaking everything a little bit and uh, kind of making it like more of that kind of look. With Selena Kyle, for instance, like having her played uh, by who is that? Um, it's musician's daughter. Damn it, Zoe, Zoe Kravitz. Kravitz. Zoe, Zoe Kravitz. Kravitz. I mean, like she looks identical to the new portrayal of Catwoman. I mean, yeah. face wise, yeah. everything like that. And then she's like getting in great shape. They show a little fight sequence. Mm-hmm. So I know that like what I've watched and stuff that she's like everyone's still training. Except for Pattinson, which is the only thing that will <laughs> But then again, like those places, they can they can get them from CGI, zero. CGI, baby. They can get there CGI. so fast. <laughs> yeah, and all he has to do is wear a suit at the time or a suit. Yeah. You yeah. Know, they don't have to, he doesn't have to look jacked. And if they don't want to put him in a shower scene, I think we'll be okay with him not <laughs> looking great. But I was hooked on this movie the second they hired Matt Reeves to direct yeah. it. Because if you saw Dawn of the Planet of the Apes or War of the Planet of the Apes. Oh, yeah. Both of those movies very are good, literally perfect. Very good. And so, when he, when they announced that he was going to direct it, I was like, "Well, I'm going to go see it. It's going to be. Yeah. I'm, I'm sold right then and there." So, yeah. yeah, I'm excited. Matt Reeves is fantastic. Those two movies are incredible. Mm-hmm. Um, Pattinson is incredible. He is. Robert, <laughs> like, here's the he thing. I, you stuff. know, I, a lot of people he have to get stuff. past the stigma of of the Twilight thing. Robert and Qu- Kristen both have yeah. really. I'll take that stigma with all the money that comes with it, please. Right, exactly. No joke. <laughs> right. No joke. Right. right. I, I, I'm sure he's laughing, all, crying all the way to the bank. I don't know. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I, you so know, he's fine with it, and, and so is Chris. Because at the end Woody of the day... Woody Harrelson, when he's wiping his tears with the money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, no, they don't like this. this is so oh. terrible. Yeah. So terrible <laughs> that I had to be a part of a franchise. I made billions right. of dollars. <laughs> what a rough life. <laughs> um, all right, so next two, let's just say what, what the last two. One's to be determined, but we'll get to that in a minute. So the next one con- confirmed after the Batman is Flash which will be November 4th of 2022. Now, it's not confirmed if we're going to do a Flashpoint movie, but I think we're all expecting it. Yeah. 
Uh, especially if they attempt to do any kind of Batman Beyond, anything else like that. I, I think at this point now, we're getting in, we're going to get into the battles of DC and MCU with this with all these multiverse things going on. Yeah, yeah, just just plain and simple. I think I think DC really has no choice but to kind of get into that. And the MCU, they already they're already probably fifteen years down the road on what the fuck they're gonna do, which they don't give a shit what DC's gonna do. Yeah. But I think DC's like, all right, well, we know they're gonna get into the multiverse. So why don't we bring in the Flashpoint storyline, which is one of everybody's favorite storylines mm-hmm. when it comes to great. the Flash as well as everything else. It's a great way to introduce Ezra Miller too. Like that's yeah. like, if you're gonna come in as the Flash and not have to do the dumb like origin story again. Yes. And right. Then do the, just jump into Flashpoint, everyone else is already on board. Like and me. like her. And everybody else is like mainstream, <laughs> like, oh, I get to see like like Batman and everyone else. I get to yeah. see all this in one movie. I'm in. Like that's a that's awesome. I think that'd be a great story, especially with how dark that universe is anyway. That's one of the darkest one tales anyway. I mean, yeah. it's it's where Bruce Wayne dies and his father's the Batman with two handguns. Yeah. yeah. Like, okay. Like, we're, yeah. why are we talking still? Make this movie. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't make any sense, but I mean, whatever. I, I guess they're taking their time. But I mean, yeah. I think the, the one thing that'll either green light that whole series is watching the Snyder Cut again, mm-hmm. the new version. And you'll like all the stuff they cut out with the Flash and Cyborg and stuff like that, that like opened the door to all that, that they totally cut off with having Joss Whedon jumping in and like, trying to lighten the mood of that movie in that yeah. sense. Like, right. I like Joss Whedon like anyone else, but he, he came in there and changed that whole movie fundamentally. Absolutely. So. Uh, yeah, anytime you bring in another director to fix something, I mean, it. it's tough. Have it's we tough. ever seen it really turn out well? I think one of the first experiences I had when I was younger was AI uh, with Stanley Kubrick mm-hmm. and Spielberg, Spielberg. And you could obviously see a massive difference between the first half of the movie to the end. And I mean, we're talking two iconic directors and I mean and not to take anything away from Whedon or Snyder but at the end of the day it's when you bring in another director to finish a film it, it's just tough yeah and Ant-Man yeah. had a different director but that was before they had shot anything if I'm not mistaken right so that's right why Peyton Reed's film is still kind of incredible yeah you know and that whole Kevin Feige as a showrunner aspect when you can actually like have a ground layout, you know, a plan, even if you do have to switch up. It's just something that DC hasn't quite figured out yet. Yeah. Which is weird because they've gotten all the help they can get from watching Marvel do it ahead of them. Exactly. <laughs> right. Like, right. Oh, that right. worked, that worked out. Oh, okay. Like, let's do our own thing now. Let's right. do everything different. They'll right. love it too. Like, right. Let's make a Marvel or we'll, we'll make a DC Universe TV show series. Not include it with the movie series. Oh my God. Get two different people to play two different flashes that look two different things because we're thinking big picture. <laughs> they could have kept Dustin. the arrow. They could have done all that and worked it into the movies. They could yeah, yeah. just like Marvel did with the uh, Agents of Shield. Mm-hmm. Every yeah. season at the end of that season or in mid season breaks, whenever a new movie from Marvel like released, it directly affected the Effect show. Is, yeah, when yeah. Winter Soldier came out, the whole series of Marvel's like whatever completely changed altered one 180 and like they had that break and they came back like shit hydra's here everyone doesn't know who's who now the whole yeah. series took a whole dramatic change it's like why couldn't you do that like mm-hmm. why don't you just have everyone working together instead of have all these divisions yeah. which does not seem to be working for them and i think they're going to do the three jokers thing by the way when you brought up the the jared leto thing yeah. right now one of the biggest storylines in comics is the three jokers that there's okay. three Jokers at any given time. That's why Batman oh, can never shit. figure out his identity. Really? He wrapped it. So, like, the collection will be out soon. I'm going to be reading it. Yeah. But uh, I think that's what they're going to do. I think they're going to take Jared Leto, and they're going to take all these other Jokers and mishmash them, mish them into a thing. Huh. That's a bring Jack back? Far, maybe, like, a couple, <laughs> couple years, maybe, projection, if they can get it together. Wow. But, yeah. Oh, I mean, I'm not sure if you know up. about that series that's uh-uh. out. Yeah, you know, the three Jokers. At the end of one of the book series, they basically, Batman sits in a chair and asks the identity of the Joker, and the chair tells him, because it knows everything, that uh, there are three Jokers. Wow. And he loses his goddamn mind, and then that's how that whole series ends, and then they start a whole run of of, uh, three Jokers. So I haven't read any of it, so I don't know anything about it yet. I'm waiting until it collects. But if they're going to keep Jared Leto around with his terrible performance and then do all the other ones, that sounds like what they might do in the future. Okay. Yeah. 
Sounds about right. Sounds about, Sounds right. about right. I'm not a fan of Jared Leto as the Joker. <laughs> it's so funny because when like I Heath Ledger, Jared. it was the exact opposite of when Heath Ledger was announced. Heath mm. Ledger was announced. Everybody was like, oh my God, he's going to be terrible. And then the movie comes out and you're like, that was fucking incredible. Yeah. Jared Leto is announced. Everybody's like, oh shit, this is going to be so dope. Movie comes out and you're like, that was fucking terrible. <laughs> what the hell was on his What thing? happened? How did this misfire so tremendously? And... I, I don't know if it's writing, if it's him. He's gone on record and saying that, you know, oh, it's the the back, you know, they cut yeah. so much. Of course it doesn't make sense. And you're just like, that would that must have been a hell of yeah. a lot to have cut because nothing <laughs> made yeah. sense. So How much time did they cut out of right. that movie to, like, make that make sense? Right. <laughs> a Wonder right. Woman 84 like size. Did, did justice to him in that movie. Like, he got that time where he was with Common. In the, in the club scene, you see how crazy he is. Yeah. And then he tortures people constantly. I've got an idea how crazy this guy is. Yeah. It, yeah. Just, it still didn't work. Like, it didn't, it didn't matter work. that we know how crazy he is. Mm-mm. Yeah. It, and I mean, and, you know, to the same point, too, besides Ledger, I mean, obviously more on Jack Nicholson's side because of Tim Burton. I would like to see if we do, let's just say it's a Three Jokers or something like that, go back to, you know, the fucking funny-ass pistols where the boom comes out. <laughs> like, going back to that That's stuff. Not Nicholson, just, like, just you know? a straight-up psycho, but, like, a straight-up psycho with a sense of humor yeah. that we could all enjoy. Uh, just okay. like we saw in the, in the cartoons and in the comics mm-hmm. back in the day. I mean, I would thoroughly, thoroughly, like, yeah, love to see Mark that. Fucking Hamill back up in this bitch. Yes, <laughs> God, no shit. You weren't going to say it, I was. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Hamill, best Joker, period. That's perfect. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Well, listen, before before we uh, before we sign off here, um, well, Kyle, why don't you tell us a little bit about the uh, the YouTube channel that you just kind of started oh, yeah. and going on so we can, you know, pump it up out there. Yeah, well, I started right when the coronavirus hit, so that, that was a, a bummer. Uh, and you guys are in california so it's definitely more of a bummer yeah i mean no one wants to come into my apartment and sit (laughs) within like five feet in a closed room with a bunch of comic books and uh, talk about comics when there's a virus going on well we we can do this via satellite anytime uh, no it's basically i i I love introducing people to comics and i I give everyone in my apartment complex work friends everyone's read something so i i I, just kept lending them out and then i thought you know what why not talk about it for fun Uh, i started to do it uh had to do it like four times because apparently videoing and editing things can be difficult who would have thought and uh, a lot of the recordings got kind of destroyed and or were terrible but uh, as soon as things kind of start going back to normal, I want to start having more people in. I've got a lot of people that want to do it and come in and talk, but it's basically for anyone who's never read anything. So if you've never yeah. read a comic book ever and you know all these movies are coming out and you want to get into it, I'm basically like going to meet with people that have never read anything. They're going to read something, come back. We talk about it. I get their input. We discuss it. And then that's it. Just kind of a casual conversation, bring up other things they might like. Because for me, I can talk to anybody and say, all right, what, what do you like to watch? What do you like to what do you enjoy and then i can yeah. single in what they might like because my collection is pretty ridiculous and it's everything i don't just yeah. have marvel i don't just have dc i have sections of marvel sections of dc but primarily it's all independent stuff image valiant yeah. um, all the all the small brands i'll just read anything and then let people borrow my my landlord has a deadly class right now and That's she cool. loves it and she's never read a comic in her life she was kind wow. of wild too and i'm like yeah I mean, the cooks at the restaurant I work at. You all got me stuff. to read them. I got her. I got my hairstylist <laughs> has two books right now. Like, yes. so I just think it'd be fun. I, I wanted to do it. And like I said, unfortunately, it, I started it right when the virus hit and people aren't really into coming in. I don't want to get a big old screen and like put it in front because that'd be weird right. too. Yeah. Right. So, I don't know. As soon as people are more comfortable with it, I'm probably going to start doing it again. Sure. But uh, it's called Let's Get Graphic. Uh, apparently Great that name. was a, a, a flagged name. Uh, when, I, when I did it, they, they held my account in like a stasis because apparently that sounds like porn uh, <laughs> I like that at the time i was like oh play on words let's be You're like no that's that's <laughs> the point that's <laughs> you like whoa whoa then you got, then you got Pornhub calling you so yeah, you looking for you looking for sponsors right now can we buy this name from you please <laughs> it is for sale i will come up with a new yeah no shit right i think i think you land yourself a gold mine there one way know. or another i'll take it i'll take it um, before we get to Scholar real quick, I did have a couple people ask about this, and I was going to bring this up. 
So there's still a date to be determined on this, but I'm very excited about it. Black Adam, we all know yeah. The Rock signed on. Yeah, for a while. There's, there's, no, there's no script, there's no nothing yet, but just kind of like thoughts about The Rock finally coming into a universe, and this one is going to be one that he's going to be a big, a, a, a big part of. He was an executive producer on Shazam. Mm-hmm. And uh, oh, so, yeah, just let me get some uh, some feedback on on the rock playing Black Adam. And again, for those of you listening out there, we do not have a tentative date on this yet. They have not gone into production. So I wish I can give you more info. Once we do have it, we'll let you know. But as far as feedback on Black Adam, I don't think they have anything on it. They was just like because they gave the rock the choice to either play Black Adam or Shazam. Oh, and, I didn't know that. Uh huh. Okay. And he chose Black Adam, um, but other than The Rock is as Black Adam, nothing. Gotcha. No directors, no other cast, no anything. We know that he's going to be an anti-hero because that's who yeah. Black Adam is. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm excited because it's The Rock. But <laughs> yeah. yeah. But otherwise, I don't, I, think, I don't have... think he's ever going to be like a villain. I think they'll oh, make absolutely. him seem like a villain at first because he's Black Adam. He's a villain. Type right. Of right. But I think that, like, he, I think contingent on everything, I think he's, like, not doing anything because he knows, like, oh, this shit needs my help. Yeah. Like, if, I, if The Rock can come into your franchise, I mean, come on. Like, he's, yeah. the problem is, is you can't make Shazam, like, Superman. You just, like, yeah. you're not going to be able to be like, oh, it's the DCU and then Shazam's the star. Kind of like what Iron Man did. I guess uh-huh. they could do that because maybe, but I think that The Rock's just going to, like, bring The Rock to it. I think he's just going to be, like, a really solid production value. They're gonna put a lot of money into it. I think. I think there's no way. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I agree with her wholeheartedly. Wholeheartedly. Yep. my man across that. We, we all love the Rock. I mean, I got the fucking you not love the guy. Absolutely. <laughs> no, he's the best. Great. He loves jungles and he loves being shirtless. <laughs> I would too if I looked like, look that. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would never Always. own. I'd just be like, ugh. Yeah. <laughs> why, why is this on? Yeah, <laughs> it's hot outside. It's twenty degrees. Well, it's still hot. It's still hot for me. <laughs> Hulk Hogan. <laughs> <laughs> so Skyler's back in Greensboro. Skyler, what 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 big plans do you have going on while you were in town? Um, not too much. In the, in the midst of COVID. In the midst of COVID, right? That was uh, one of the big factors. No, um, this. When I finally decided that I was going to move, the initial, because Nashville is still the goal uh, mm-hmm. for me to go to Nashville and hopefully Jordan to go to Nashville with me. Jordan, if you're listening, <laughs> um, we're going to go to Nashville and try and get the band going. Um, Scott will be here with his family, but mm-hmm. he'll make trips out there whenever we have gigs and whatever. I still hope to play in North Carolina and Atlanta, where I'm from, uh, where I'm from, where I just moved from. Um, but at the moment, um, I, I I came back to Greensboro High Point because uh, my dad is having knee replacement surgery. So I know how stubborn my father is. <laughs> so to be able to be an extra hand when my when my mom is like, no, Mike, you shouldn't do that. Yeah. And he's like, whatever, I can do it. I'm like, no, <laughs> dad, sit down. I'll do it. You know, and he'll be like, All right, whatever. You know, I know that he's going to get some super cabin fever and to be an extra helping hand for them just around the house, also to save a little money. Who are we kidding? Um, yeah. But, you this know. Economy? In this economy? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, In I'm, this climate? All I'm, climates. I'm excited to be back and see some people that I haven't seen in a while. But oh, overall, um, like how you started with the, uh, the pod, YouTube all right, Let's Get Graphic. That's such a good name. It's such so a good. Name. So good. Um, when COVID first started, uh, started and was happening, I bought a, um, uh, a music studio, like uh, a computer and everything where I could sort of record music at home. Mm. So that's going to be most of this plan up, up, un, up until and through the summer is to hopefully get something recorded to where we can actually have some demos and whatever. So who knows, but on luck. the lookout. Yeah. My brother Skyler. Oh, it's I know best. all about y'all. The best name in the world. <laughs> I know all about my brother's cousin. Yay, yeah, yay. Yeah. Well, good luck, Jordan. Uh, yeah. uh, Jordan and Skyler. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, Skyler, Kyle, and of course you. 
the you out there, Brenda. Only. I'll be next month. I'll be, I'll be home. On my no, I appreciate it. I'm glad we did this whole East Coast, West Coast thing tonight. For those of you that have been tuning in on Facebook, thank you guys so much for tuning in. This will be on our Facebook page forever. We're going to have it on YouTube tomorrow. Uh, the audio will probably be out next week. Be sure to like, subscribe, follow on all of our formats. That's Instagram, Facebook, IG, Pinterest. TikTok. Yeah, but Pinterest. Yeah, I know. We, pick, Pinterest and MySpace. TikTok. We're, we're blowing up. MySpace. Blowing up. MySpace. Oh, MySpace. I can't even remember my MySpace fucking. <laughs> I tried record. the other day. I did too. Oh Only God. because I wanted to remember what my song was when you came to my page. <laughs> I just wanted to see pictures. Oh, my pictures were. I don't even want the pictures. I just want to know I what the song was. The sound bites. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, again, big shout out to our sponsors, the Believe Podcast Network, of course, betonline.ag, and our newest sponsor, Manscaped. Manscaped. Making sure oh, you nice. take care of your Love junk them. out there. Love Manscaped yep. over here, a big fan. Oh, happy, nice. happy customer. <laughs> nice. Yeah, they're, they're our He's newest happy. sponsor. That's incredible. So, yeah, being able to take care of your junk in the shower with an electric razor. It Without works out fantastic. Electric, it is, uh, or cut. Yeah, and they, they have sprays. They yeah, have all kinds of shit. All. Oh, I know. They got this whole package, and I was like, wow, I yeah. was I was not expecting all this. I, so. The package, their marketing is on point, though. <laughs> your balls <laughs> will thank you. Yep, your balls, your will, balls will thank you. Your balls will thank you. <laughs> Exactly. So there you go. You got more fans out there, Manscaped. I think we have a promo code, but I'll throw that in there probably after this. Um, but again, big thank you, Brendan and Kyle, for uh, talking for to us on the West Coast. We'll definitely have you back on. Skyler's in town for a little bit, so I'm going to take advantage of this until he moves out to Nashville. <laughs> have him on here. We'll do weekly podcast episodes and all kinds of fun shit. And of course, uh, be sure to check out Yes Weekly, Gate City Growlers. Speakeasy Tavern, all the places that we do trivia at, our sponsors, our good friends, and we will catch you on the next one. Later. You guys. Yeah! Victory! And anger management? Fuck anger management.